Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 41 of the Contest Round podcast. If you don't know already, we're available on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on iTunes podcasts and Spotify, did I say that? Yeah, so it's all of them, all of the major ones we're available on so you can get us in your ears once a week normally. And if you don't know already and you don't know at all, then you should know that my co-host runs his own website and that is www.frontlinemcc.home.blog Links are in the description always. Make sure you put it as your homepage if you are as passionate about Marvel Contest of Champions as I am, as he is. Dan, hello, another week. Hey Rich, yes, another week. A week with uh, maybe a little bit more hope than we've been uh, experiencing in, in the uh, the past uh, <laughs> past few months. So, yeah. uh, you know, definitely uh, feeling tired, but, uh, you know, feeling hopeful. Yeah, I think it's really weird, isn't it? Like one week it's like, oh, you know, COVID's still a thing. And the next, the, and the next seven, in the next seven days is like, yeah, we've got a vaccine, right? It's in early stages. It might be able to be shipped worldwide um, coming next year. But still, it's like, you know, it's good to have hope. You know, yeah, hope. it's good to have something to look forward to. And uh, as someone who uh, whose living depends on uh, on concerts. Mm -hmm. It would be uh, it would be nice for those to be legal again. Mm. Oh, <laughs> so speaking of, you know, I was say, come on, of vaccine. Yeah, exactly. I was say, speaking of illegal, I've um, I've in a very first time, I think for forty one first time in forty one episodes, I'm having a glass of wine whilst uh, recording the podcast. I mean, it's not. Oh, you enjoying your Friday night. <laughs> Yeah, um, as you should, Rich. As yeah. you should. It's it's been it's been a while since uh, since I, th I think now that I've kind of reached the point where uh, throughout the whole kind of YouTube situation and stuff, like I've, I battled uh, depression and things, but I haven't gone back to like have a have like a, a, a drink. Uh, after going like I, I said, oh, I'll go out alcohol free. Went out, me and him went alcohol free. I think for about two months, and then we were like. Um, and then we went away for a break, and then we kept. Then the YouTube thing happened, and it's been two months of just kind of like just uh, And then we've had. So we just went. Do you know what? We'll we'll crack open a, a bottle of something. To be honest, it's been in it's been in our fridge for nearly a year. So we're kind of thinking. <laughs> every time we had two bottles of like these two bottles, and we're like, oh god, this is gonna. First bottle, I think we were we were in a lot of pain. I'm, very kind of like gutsy pain. And I don't really do uh, white wine too much, but M likes mm. it, so I'm like, okay, if it's if it's been cracked open, we'll have we'll have a slurp. So we're having a slurp. In any case, how we how there are you, you go. Doing? You you deserve a drink, Rich. Thank you. You I mean, deserve you deserve a drink. Thank you. I'm 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 good, man. I had uh, got some uh, had a had a very busy week at work. Got some some good news there, yeah. which uh, really kept me out of. MCOC for uh, most of the week. I'm super behind on all the content. Mm. I wanted to uh, get out this weekend. None of it has, has even been started. So, uh, you know, that I'm a little annoyed at that. I, I, I haven't made any progress in Act 6 this week, but uh, just trying to get through uh, Cavalier difficulty. So I at least feel like I'm making a, uh, a little bit of progress. That's good. Wife and uh, son, okay? Yeah, everyone's, uh, everyone's good. The little guy is... Uh, is gearing up for his uh his birthday in a few weeks he's about nice. to turn five so Aww. he's super excited about that because he told me that um four has been very boring so he's hoping that five will not be as boring and, uh, <laughs> i think that's his way of telling me like he wants to go out and like <laughs> he's like do you remember playgrounds it's like yeah i know i remember <laughs> playgrounds <laughs> you know but we're having fun we're playing a lot of uh Pikachu's Pokey Park Adventure. Oh, nice! Uh, on the Wii, so he is—he's uh, loving that. Um, and yeah, we're just you know kind of, kind of just uh, doing more of the same, hanging out and uh, you know just uh, trying to uh, pass the time and build memories as we can, given the uh, given the limitations yeah. of, of what's uh, what's going on right now. Oh yeah, what a what a time! What a what a what a time to be alive! I was thinking to myself, never in my lifetime. I think my grandparents are saying this is the second time that they've had a um, pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I think my my nan remembers something like it. it's really it's really weird when you speak to grandparents. They have these kind of like weird weird stories. They're kind of like 
diverse. I will get it. We we will get into like this Marvel content champions, but it's like what I think of these stories, like it's really kind of cool. Like my great nan, uh, my well granddad is um, from a little uh, a little island called Jersey. I think I think it's mm-hmm. Jersey or Guernsey, where the Nazis occupied it in. Um, in World War Two, for a brief period, because they built all these kind of like superstructures that are made out of concrete, and then you know they kind of too ambitious, and then D Day and whatnot, uh, kind of like changed all that. So um, the the story is my great nan always used to wind up the uh, the Germans used to like she used to come out of her house and like get a German soldier and go, um, um, I've captured a tiny spy in my house, and it, the 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 officer or the kind of private would go a spy a spy you've caught a spy i must see this spy and she lead her in lead these uh the the um uh officers into or perhaps into the into the kitchen he goes you you stay very carefully crap i think she like she was quite bored she used to call them krauts like you say very crap crap you stay there and you look on the floor and what happened was this mouse would come out and come out and go over the kitchen floor, and and it used to incense them because he she used to just wind them up. Because thing is, they're occupied. There's nothing really you could you can do except for try and have a bit of a laugh. And that's that's <laughs> that was my great nan. She used to, she, yeah. um, you know. The, 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 but the thing is, like, I don't know. Sorry, I've diversified the story. I've had a wine. <laughs> I'm I'm just digging out any kind of weird stories. <laughs> But it's a bit of a, a bit of a funny one. In any case, we'll get in. We'll get to talk about MCOC. Unless Dan's got a humorous other anecdote about a relative that we could listen to. No, I would. <laughs> I would just say. I would. I would just say uh, the one thing I learned this week is do not. Um, you know, if you have a four-year-old that's into Pokemon and they tell you uh, a, a fact about Pokemon, like they they're like encyclopedias, like. Like my son is afraid to do some of the Pokemon battles sometimes. So like, but he always wants to be Pikachu and then he'll throw me the remote and it'd be like, Papa, that Pokemon's, uh, that Pokemon is immune to electricity. So don't zap it. I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. And of course I go to zap it and nothing happens. And he's like, I told you it was immune to electricity and you didn't listen. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like, yeah, it's like, I, I'm sure like, I remember as a little kid being like an encyclopedia about dinosaur facts and just Mm -hmm. like torturing my parents about dinosaurs. And he's doing the same thing to me with Pokemon. And it just, it just all comes back around. It's one big cycle, man. Well, I think that's, well, that's kind of like MCOC, isn't it? Like the, the amount, Mm -hmm. I'd say it's like with, with people, um, like, you know, people are younger, like comment, like just a comment section, but Richard, this does not work with this node. What are you yeah. saying? You got that <laughs> wrong. <laughs> what I, say? No, I know we are at like 170 characters who can, <laughs> who can get all these interactions, right? So, but yeah, look at, looking at the game this week that I think the, one of the big talking points was the, uh, first round of the, um, champion choice mm. so who did you end up voting for rich i voted for a mega sentinel a mega sentinel she seems to be super popular i mm. um i like her as a character i like her in the comics uh i'd love to see her in game i i personally i voted for dazzler nice um i'm not super sure about her her chances i i hope she's going into round two i feel like Based on what I've seen in the community, I feel like Omega Sentinel is definitely making it to round two. Yeah. I expect Omega Sentinel and Morgan Le Fay yeah. to be moving on. Uh, and I'd be happy to see either of those in game. After that, it feels like it's a bit of a crap shoot between mm-hmm. um, the rest of them. Yeah, I've, I I kind of feel like I've seen a lot of people push Hercules and also talking about Okoye. So I'm like, I'm thinking, is that going to be... And like, is this my, my prediction being Morgan Le Fay, Omega Sentinel, Hercules and Okoye? I'm feeling it might be those four. I'm not going to like put, you know, I don't know, $10 on, on a bet to say that they will, will go through because it'd be... That feels pretty solid. I think a lot of people are not voting for Morbius because they're falsely assuming he's going to be added to the game automatically when his movie comes out, Hmm. which is, I mean, according to Gabe, uh, none of these champions are in development right now. Yeah. Uh, And with Morbius being really like a Sony movie, like I know, I I know they're going to be using MCU characters in there, obviously, but yeah. uh, 
like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't guarantee that we're gonna see someone from like Morbius or the Venom movies uh, yeah. just because. That's a good point. It, it's a weird one, I think, because uh, they've. I want to say because I think this might be the mistake that I kind of fell into was. Disney have done rights, um, like co co rights, co usage type things with Sony for Spider Man, but they have not done the similar thing for the other films. Uh, just so that you know, you've we we've seen uh, Stealth Suit Spidey, we've seen. Uh, Stark enhanced for Homecoming and Far From Home films, respectively. Right. Yeah. But because there was, and again, more that I think about it is more like, okay with Hoop La Di Da. What about the the Sony rights of the films? Uh, was about Spider Man solely. It wasn't about like you know any of the other characters. So yeah, that's gonna be that. That's a good point. You're right. The one, the main. And but uh, when have they done something? So they've done it. Did they do a dead? Cool thing. No. I'm, I'm well, they did. They did do. Um, did they do Domino? The, what, yes. Uh, Domino and Massacre came out um, the month that uh, Deadpool two came out. Mm. Uh, but I mean, remember that was that's classic comics. Yeah. Uh, Domino. That was not the Deadpool movie. Domino. So there was, yeah. you know, it was kind of a tie in, but clearly they didn't have the the you know they didn't have the the movie domino there i don't know if that was an ip issue or just a a design choice yeah no because they didn't have the Z- zazzy i think it's zazzy beats is that how you say her name yeah i, I don't know because the problem is in the uk we got this kind of uh the, we had an old music um thing uh like uh what is it called like a a, a music wholesaler or like a shop called zavi for a time and always get confused with calling uh, uh, thing like her Zavi beats, but I think it's Zazzy beats. I think I could have got that wrong. I don't know. Everyone always catches me up for butch- <laughs> butchering something. God damn it! Yeah, but that's the thing. I hope that um, and this is what I, I I said in like a video is like have at least two characters from the list that you like, even though you're only voting for one. It's just that like you know, chances are if your the one that you like doesn't go through, then you're like. Oh right, which one do I vote for then, uh, in ra- in round two? So that would be the thing, and we don't know because we're recording this on a Friday. Whether or not the results will come through any moment now, whilst we're recording, or it's going to be a case that you know it's going to come in tomorrow or or whatnot, and then we start our campaigning for for week two. Um, with that, so yeah, it's going to be a fun one next week. Yes, if if uh, my girl Dazzler doesn't make it, I will hop on the Omega Sentinel hype train with you. Yeah, I think if um, if Omega Sentinel doesn't make it, which I think I'm 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 pretty pretty confident on the will of the people, especially with yeah. uh, a, a strong uh, we got a strong Indian um, uh, fan base. Yeah, I mean a huge a huge Indian uh, fan base in this game. Uh, India is usually second or third every month on on my my views by mm-hmm. countries yeah so and and you know she would be an indian character added to the game so i think that that would energize a huge portion of the uh, of the player base yeah i, I kind of like go back to my uh, my joke when i was kind of putting this to put my video together for this that because uh, it's not i think somebody said on twitter i, I want to say it's um mcc kalantak said to Kabam Mike, uh, no, I said, that, oh, there's, no, there's not been an Indian uh, character in game, and and Mike was like, uh, technically, they're source of supreme, and I think like I kind of made the joke of saying like the last time I checked, Indian people were not the color of blue, um, and uh, you know, it's it's a case it would be good to see someone who looks like they're Indian actually in the game, even though technically the origin of source of supreme is is Indian, but you know, as I said, yeah, I, I last time I checked. When I went to India, they weren't all blue. Unless it's after the Festival of Diwali. May, many blessings on you, by the way, of uh, Festival of Diwali. Hopefully your fa- all families are safe. See? Cultural! See, that's what we're doing, Dan. We're being cultural. There we go. We're, we're learning stuff, Rich. Yeah? We're learning stuff. That was that was kind of a... No, hang on. I've got it wrong, hasn't it? Diwali is not the fest... No, is Diwali the Festival of Colour? Okay, maybe I'm getting you, it wrong. You're gonna, yeah, you're yeah. you're on your own on this one, Rich. Um, I, I've, I've, I have got to. We're I've, gonna, we're definitely gonna get some uh, some corrections in the comments about this. Festival of color. 
is no, I didn't. No, it's Holly in it. Oh, Happy Holly. That's what they. That's what they say in March. Jesus Christ, Richard. Unless it's the festival of Holly. There we go. God there we go. There we I, go. There we go. I got the cut. The um, I want to actually. Let's while we're here. Um, I want to find out. It's the, oh, it's a festival of lights. So unless people are yeah okay, festival of lights celebrated to honor uh, Ramachandra, the seventh avatar incarnation of the god Vishnu. That's that's really interesting. It's believed that this day Rama returned to his uh, people after fourteen years of exile, during which he fought and won a battle against the demons and the demon king Ravana. See, I'd love to learn a bit more with. Uh, with these with the kind of festivals and stuff so it's, it's cool to learn up a bit about different cultures so um we've learned something there um i don't know how we go on from this because we want to go we'll talk about meaning and stuff but moving <laughs> on let's talk a little bit about um act six nerfs act yeah because we've actually started to play act six again and i i from watching your videos and i know this was a big part of why you decided to do an abyss run was that you weren't really feeling act 6.2 100 percent even with the nerfs is that is that still how you're feeling yeah mainly for 6.2.5 which is where i'm at too yeah, right now i started i thought i thought to myself okay i'll do a couple of paths in 6.2.5 i've still got uh, i think about two paths in 6.2.4 which is fine i'll get around to doing it and then i was like do you know what i am bored out of my tiny box with uh, with this so I decided to kind of change my mind and do uh, Abyss of Legends. And further to that, I'm actually going to instead explore 6.3, especially with uh, looking back at some of the changes. Some of the pain points were 6.3.1 and I think 6.3.5 and 6.3.6, .6, all of which have had changes to them. Yeah. So that's going to be my, my next focus. I'm going to go and do, after I've done Cavalier Difficulty this month, which I'm, I'm nearly 100% on, I've just got to do, I think, what, one or about three three more quests, just a few more paths, um, and the last one, 100%. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, I think that's where my focus is. Where are you at currently? Yeah, I have the same thing. I want to get through Cavalier, hopefully this weekend. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to power through uh, 625. Um, it, the problem is the scouting. Mm. I feel like it takes me like 10 minutes to scout the lane. And I've been using Cat Murdoch's maps, which help because then you don't have to click on every single node. But um, there are some very, very punishing combinations there. It's like, okay, it's a Joe fix it. That's not bad. All right. But the global node is do not go gentle. Oh, now he's stun immune. Oh, now he has yeah. Bane on him. Oh, great. <laughs> and if I die, I have to revive anyway because um, I need uh, I need to have a full team uh, for that Mordo. Uh, so been relying heavily on Void um, for uh, for Act uh, six point two point five. But I I do feel like once I slog through it, it's all kind of downhill from there. Like. The champion doesn't worry me that much mm -hmm. um, since the nerf, so I think that'll be fine. So it's really more like let's let's just get this done. <laughs> yeah, is is kind of how I'm feeling because I had been kicking around the I abyss idea, and then this week happened, and I if I was going to do abyss, I really needed to be um, you know grinding my face off in Realm of Legends for potions, and I had no time to do that. So yeah. I think um I think I'm just gonna uh keep working on Act Six, plug it away, and uh, we'll see what Cyber Weekend uh brings me. Yeah, because this is that's funny. Funny enough, I think what we'll do is we'll lead into um the idea of Cyber Weekend. Very interesting because as an, as a lot of you know, my kind of like thoughts about where I decided to change change my mind. I think it was that it was change my mind and what I was doing with Cyber Weekend and as well. Um, what I felt I was going to get out of Cyber Weekend from a offer standpoint, from a a comparison standpoint as well, because that was the biggest thing. Is going, okay, so my units, where would they be best off invested in? Also, I'm not going to change my masteries, and as well, I'm going to have very limited stash. What are my capabilities? I have the team. Do I have the patience? 
and will I get the good result from it? And I still stand by what I what my my decision was to to do Abyss of Legends over uh, on a spend of about four k units um, with zero stash or incredibly limited over Cyber Weekend deals. And we we, we were talking about I've got it on screen at the moment for those watching on YouTube. And me and Dan were discussing this. There was this poll that came up with somebody saying, "I'll be buying a couple of Cyber Monday offers. Nothing too crazy, but I should have a quite a few units when I combine what I've got with the amount by buying." Now, should I use those units go go towards the Cyber Monday unit offers, or should I use them on an Abyss run? My team for Abyss will be Symbiote Supreme, Aegon, Human Torch, Hit Monkey, and probably Heindel or Dead uh, Dead Dead Three uh, Three Star Nick Fury. So, what should I use them on? And people have predominantly gone with um, Cyber Monday unit offers over an Abyss run. Now, um, Dan, what are your thoughts with with kind of like? this kind of situation of going one or the other it's it's tricky right because those abyss rewards are always there and cyber monday is a limited time offer right yeah. so you could always t get the cyber monday deals um and then grind out some more units and then get the abyss uh, rewards and then you've got two sets of rewards instead of one set of rewards yeah but you you know that's if you have the time, yeah, um, and you're willing to to wait, right? Like, there's I think there's no question that you're not going to see a full T5 CC and a six star Awakening gem in the first two um, cash offers. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's just no way you're going to get that for five thousand units. Mm. You'll get some really good stuff for five thousand units, but it's not going to be that. Uh, at least I'd be I would be absolutely floored if if we saw if we saw either a six star awakening gem or a full T five CC in the in the second offer I would be floored. Yeah, I I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. I think maybe in that four K offer you could get like twenty five percent T five CC, but then. Is it less for calves? And the calves are really the ones that need the T5CC mm. to move up to Thronebreaker. Uh, and they're just not going to get as much. At least that's what we expect. I, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm expecting is someone who may end up uh, buying the Thronebreaker title on uh, Cyber Weekend at this point. Yeah. That is going to be the the key uh, for a lot of lot of players like, like yourself going like, do you know what? Time wise, it would be it's it's easier for me on time. You know, people have people have like very kind of busy lives. It's not always about, you know, just extensively grinding MCOC um all the live long day. I mean it's certainly not 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 for me. So it's just kind of going like, okay, you gotta fit in where you can. And like realistically, I say at the start of the month, I wanna do X, Y, and Z and by the end of the month, I've probably done X and Y. Now, last month very different because I just I decided, look, you know, I might be I might have to end my YouTubing career yeah. based on what what happened. So I just went, do you know what? Screw it. For the last week, I'm going to do a load of permanent content. I did six point two point two, hundred percented it. I did a large chunk of six point two point four, and did an, a, a solo abyss of uh, sorry solo a um uh, an easy path abyss of legends run. Because I just felt like, okay, like, you know, screw it. I'm just going to do it. And it literally was a case. I missed off the, a good chunk of the side quest in order to achieve it. I managed to do, I think it was like down to the wire, the very kind of last 10 minutes of, of it. Because I think the last, I only had like. Oh, wow. Last, yeah, I was like the last, it was the last day. It was the um, the Wednesday. I decided to do a stream where I just did this side quest all the live long, uh, all, the, all a good chunk of the day. And. I need those tier five class catalyst fragment crystals as much as possible. I mean, I had uh, an option to rank through a six star, but I was like, do you know what? I need to do it. But it's time. That's the thing. You know, if yourself and many other players are like, do you know what? I've got the units. I've got time to grind a good amount of arena, but I don't have enough time to kind of go. Let's do an abyss run. I mean, I put mine over three days, so it gives you an idea. Yeah, that's that's my thing. Is like, if I if I I wouldn't want to just start spending units on the items i'd want to go in with a stash but that takes yeah. time to grind and right now if i was doing that before thanksgiving that would 
totally stall my Act 6 progress, which I, I do actually want to keep working on, and it would really slow me down with Cavalier and the and the side quest, so it's just the, the trade-off didn't end up working for me right now, so mm. I figure I'm going to get the Cyber Weekend deals anyway, and I'll just go from there. Yeah. Um, and this is the thing. I'm 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 wondering what what they're gonna what they're gonna be like. Is it gonna be throne breaker ones? Is it gonna be cab? I mean, the, the good thing about it is like if you get in, um, are you gonna do a, a, a are you gonna pay for any units by unit pack with stuff, or are you just gonna go straight into the? I'll, I'll probably I'll probably spend a little bit of money. But the tactical like, thing from it is that if there was specific, well, I don't know. That is there a, any? Would they do like a changeover thing? Like going, right, well, if you buy something, yeah. you get tier 5 class catalyst. From the buying offer, you're able to go, okay, so I've fully formed a tier 5 class catalyst. You rank up a champion to rank 3. You, uh, unless it, is it, I can't remember if mine was instant, where it kind of like, I, I instantly got Thronebreaker, and then it, yeah. you'd get the deals subsequent. Excuse me. I mean, I, I think a lot of people are going to be thinking about that, right? Where they, mm. it could be a situation where, okay, you buy the, the, um, you know, the cash offer with your units, you get enough T5CC, you make the, the throne breaker rank up, yeah. you close the game, you get you log back in, you're a throne breaker, and then the real money deals move up to that throne breaker level. Um, yeah, I mean, that's certainly something I've, I've talked about. I wouldn't say I'm banking on it, but mm. uh, certainly something I am uh, kind of thinking about right now. Yeah, because that's the thing, isn't it? With the titleish system, it's something that we are we are, we're going to talk about now. Is uh, the summoner sigil? Now, I I put together something in Marvel Contest of Champions news today, where it's uh, something that went out and it was a discussion about the summoner sigil. Something that over the last few days, uh, Kabam have uh, reached out to the player base in response. Um, and they've done pretty well to kind of like asses. I don't know if like Kabam last uh, in the last year have done as much as this to kind of go like, oh, what would you like to see from this? We take your, uh, we you know, we understand that you guys don't like the um, the Immortal Hulk, um, uh, the way the champion's being put out. So we're like, oh, you know, we'll we'll take in consideration. So the question was asked, what would you like to see out of a sigil upgrade? Uh, were you surprised to see that, Dan? Oh, I I feel like it's time, mm. and they've been they've been communicating with us, and I think, um, I think it a lot of it is because of the Thronebreaker title too, right? Like, yeah, they want they there's only Cavalier uh, level deals on the on the Thronebreaker. There's no there's nothing extra as far as the sigil when it comes to being Thronebreaker, right? So. Mm. They there does need to up the val is something to up the value yeah. there to make it worthwhile to the end gamers. Uh, so yeah, I I would like to see that. Um, I like to see gold like the gold quest. I think should be doubled at every level. God yeah. Um, like I feel like that's something they don't sell a lot of gold. It's so it's it's not really going to hurt them. Uh, but it's a huge quality of life thing for the players. Yeah. If there's just a little bit more gold, so I'd love to see the gold doubled. Um, Throne breakers definitely need some special uh, deals, and I think that would help uh, in you know incentivize people. Like throne breakers should be able to get a cheap six star uh, featured. Yeah. Just like cavalier can get the the uh, cheap. Um, five star featured uh a lot of the throne breakers don't really care about the five star featured like they might want the new champ but they don't need those champs so i, I would like to see the the cheap six star uh featured for throne breakers um what else i'd love to see a four star to five star sig stone trade in yeah i think that would be great uh probably for cavalier players um what else do the uh do the throne breakers want maybe uh Sing maybe a stones? little i mean if if hector was watching or hector was listening he'd be like yeah go to, go see some six star signature stones six star signature stones uh maybe a little more t5 cc um mm -hmm. i don't know maybe that's a trade in maybe that's a yeah. t4 to t5 trade in uh so that would be cool uh yeah i mean it doesn't it doesn't have to be a ton of things right 
Uh, but they can just sweeten the pot a little bit. Yeah, my tier two alpha. Uh, the the trading at the moment is you, you get seven hundred and twenty tier two alpha uh, for the trading of one tier one alpha. <sighs> yeah, I I've heard Cam's talked about this a lot, but uh, just that uh, you can get you get T five B too fast compared to T two A. Yeah, because you need so much more T two A. That's the problem I was having. I think I expired one of them because I was like, uh, and it, it broke my heart to have a, an expiring tier five basic. That absolutely yeah. broke my heart. But what what can you, what can you really do? Um, when you get throne breaker, the only advantage from that is that the daily crystal seem to be giving you a nice healthy chunk, and I, I you know that's the only thing so so far. There's there's not really anything of value to being a throne breaker at the moment. Um, from me being a throne breaker, except for the daily crystals, that's one thing. Yep. And I'm and I'm struggling to find any kind of like follow up. I mean, you know, it's uh, there. Yeah, may, maybe they should up the inventory cap for uh, um, T five CC and T five B for throne breakers. Mm. Give people a little more cushion then. Yeah, and even even with like the, the dailies, I've just like uh, if anybody watching YouTube, I just spun up one of the the dailies out. Um, you get four thousand. Like I picked up four thousand five hundred tier five basic from one of those one of those crystals. But at times you can pick up anything from the uh, tier four basic, five star champion units, uh, right the way through to tier five class catalyst fragments. Tier two alpha is the most common thing I seem to be picking up the the most of. But still, it's of value. It's it's good stuff and it is helpful. But it's just a case still. I'm going look tier two alpha. Where where's my stock now? Um, I am on uh, eight, so I can rank up a champion. But I'm saving that for. And but that's the thing. As soon as I've ranked up a champion, I'm like I'm back to square one. Going oh damn it! I've I mean yeah. I've just formed another tier five basic. So uh, <laughs> can you believe that's actually a problem now? Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm I'm now like that's I had one. That was going to expire in 20 days. Just in this, like, whilst we've been re recording, I've just added one that's going to be 29 days expiring. I've got, I, I've got, yeah, so I'm overstocking my um, my inventory. It's, it's just weird. It's so weird. Well, then, you know, another another good thing, not not sigil specific, but would be good for throne breakers. Um, the the prices in the glory store change based on your, your title, what you're able to get and how much of it you're able to get. So yes. If... Uh, if they could increase the the tier two alpha purchase in the uh, in in the glory store for throne breakers, that would be another nice quality of life um, bonus. Yeah, because we've got um, what have we got? Yeah, so we've got the seven thousand two hundred. So I can't remember the last time the glory store was improved. I want to say it was definitely sometime this year. It was this year, but it's been it's been a while. I feel like yeah. there's an AQ update that we we should be due for it, but I, I think it's a question of how close are these major AQ AW uh, revamps yeah. um, that they've been talking about in the roadmap? Are they if they're only a couple months away, they might be like, okay, like we're we're gonna get to that soon. If it's like six months away, well, you know, maybe maybe we should get a an you know a midterm update. Mm. I guess the same thing can be said for stuff like, um, well, I don't know, the loyalty store. Like, I've had a few people say to me, oh, the loyalty store should be improved. I think for me, the only thing I'm interested in is seeing a six-star Unstoppable Colossus. Yeah, I spend my loyalty so quick that uh, it doesn't even matter. Mm. I mean, those, those. Now that I'm doing map seven five days a week, uh, that loyalty goes pretty fast. Did you, re did you join a... Um... Do you rejoin your old alliance or? I didn't. I didn't rejoin my old alliance. I actually. Uh, I joined uh, Dragons Alliance from the UMCOC podcast because Ooh. they do. Um, my old alliance was still pushing Plat Three Wars with Map Seven, and right. I just couldn't do both. But Dragons Alliance does uh, Map Seven, but does Tier Six Wars. Nice. Um, yeah, it was super fun today. We uh, were about forty-eight mil, and we matched up against like a twenty-seven mil alliance that. <laughs> couldn't couldn't clear the map so you know it's and i it looks like we're boss rushing at tier five so i it, it's great because i don't want to play the modifiers 
Yeah. So that's good. yeah, I I would like to uh, you know someday I would like to um, rejoin my old crew, but um, for right now I I cannot handle these these high tier wars. Mm. Yeah, I think we're 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 doing doing all right. I think that we're um, you know I'm still I'm still committed. I know I've had a few people that have been in our alliance for a long time kind of going like, oh they maybe want something different i really f i'm considering like my options for next year i guess for me it just depends on what um i've got to wait t technically i've got to wait until the 10th of december to find out what's going on with my youtube stuff like i need that that's that's usually the time to find out when i'm going to get paid but um yeah. and whether or not i kind of like hang up the phone hang up the camera i don't know what it, what it is hang up the phone <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, that's close the app. Yeah. Um, no, so that'll be the thing of going like if if everything's okay, then in January I will be when I get back from a holiday in late January because I've had to. I think we've rescheduled our holiday now twice from last year. No, this year. Sorry. So we we had a holiday. I think booked March. We then rescheduled it to. Um, yeah, rescheduled it. It was meant to be. I was meant to be on holiday as of next week. Uh, but uh, we've now been able to reschedule it again for January. So um, I, I really want to go on that. It's a nice little break. But um, then I'll come back and go, look, you know, is this time for me to go? Let's think about map seven. Let's think about, like, making a step upwards. Um it's weird, isn't it? Because like I get a good. This is good and really convenient for me. So that's that's the, that's another kind of issue. Like I spend all day working and I work towards like like eleven p.m. at night and I move in Alliance Quest about anything close to midnight in the UK. Mm. So it's kind of good because then the the because we're in different countries. Like X, Y, and Z people would move on different paths overnight. I pick it up in the morning, do up to a certain point. They then finish off when it's like early on them, and then I do whatever I need to do to finish off what I need to do, uh, and it works out really well. And I'm able to kind of like balance this around what I do for a living and what I plan to do in the future. So I need to consider those options. That's that's the issue, isn't it? Like what's comfortable mm. for yourself. Yeah, certainly. It's uh, being competitive in in both game modes is really really taxing from a time standpoint and uh the stress levels like i i just find um alliance quest way more rewarding and less stressful than alliance war where you just never know quite what you're going to be dealing with uh <laughs> mm. every war uh, i would much rather just have my lane and know who the opponents are and uh of course map seven that rotates every week so you're getting mm. a little bit of variety there but Honestly, I don't need that much variety in those game modes. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. Okay, moving on. We're talking about competitive summoner showdown. Something that, um, I've, I've, honestly, I've not. I need to get into supporting because at the end of the day, these are people from our community, and um, I will be featuring a lot more when I'm covering for Marvel Contest Champions News because these are still people of the community. Seem like nice people as well. So let's get on. You know, there is the. I'm not going to go into like who this person was that got kicked out because they were they were being naughty, uh, but you know you were naughty, so you got punished. In any case, semi-finals. Uh, I I can't remember when it's going to kick off. I want to say it's to today. Is it today or is it next week? Well, they're not they're not live streaming any of it, right? <sighs> yeah, this is this is the problem. Like, I want to get hyped for it. I want to support people, but because it's not being streamed, that's the difficulty, isn't it? Yeah. So it'll be interesting to find out. I know they're going to be uploading the the video footage. So at home, I'm just going to go, "Yay!" Uh, that's that's me being <laughs> enthusiastic, Dan. I mean, there there's some cool stuff in there where they're setting up challenges for each other, and there's going to be champion bands. Mm. So it makes you think, like, okay, are they testing out something that could be coming to? Uh, new competitive game modes in the future. Well, this is what I was. I was kind of. I think. I think. I, I put this into what one of the news is just going like. Is this something of what they're referring to as solo competitive or or something like that, a one v one type situation? But you got a good point, Dan. It could be it. Yeah, it's they. They, they always like to test stuff like they're doing with mm. Root now, right? Like they're t testing it in a somewhat controlled environment, and we'll see. Uh, 
we'll see what they do with it next. I, I think some people are pretty actually nervous about about that. But yeah, it's looking at the Summoner Showdown, right? Like yeah. you're picking uh, Summoner 1 picks a tactic, Summoner 2 picks their tactic, then champion band, selecting attackers, select defenders. So they this could be something pretty cool yeah. um, that they could then use this technology for. And it's also interesting how they have uh, preset masteries mm -hmm. as well. So, because that was one of the big cl complaints uh, about round one, right? It was about the mastery builds. Yep. So, kind of, I kind of like where they're heading with it from a from a setup. So we'll have to see how the footage turns out. Yeah, one thing that was kind of curious about this month, and maybe it's something I completely forgot. Someone said to me about, um, oh, what's happened to the champion deep dives? Because I want to say that there was no champion deep dive for Immortal Hulk, but I, I could be wrong. I'm just going to like... Um, no, it, it, uh, Dave was tweeting about that. that he, he did say that they were still on the way. That there oh, was going right, to be... Okay. There's going to be one for, uh, for I-Bomb, and he is working on December... Uh, one. So I don't know what happened to uh, Immortal Hulk, but mm. Dave says he's still working on him. So I know people look forward to those videos. Yeah, maybe something something happened. I mean, you know, we've had like a few changes here and there. If Kabam go last, maybe uh, you know, what was the the story about Cosmic Ghost Rider? Had a deep dive. The character had been changed a bit since it was um, since because Dave gets the developer because it comes. It's in the bottom right hand corner. If anyone any doesn't doesn't see it, right. it says developer yeah. build. So. If Dave is kind of doing a video in and it's like, okay, here we go. And like, he's like fully edited it and it's kind of, is ready to go and goes, hey, kabam, right, video's done and send it to them. Now, I'm just assuming this. I don't know if this is true, but sends it to them and they go, oh, do not, we're changing the champion. Then he has to go back and redo the video. So therefore it's, st it's kind of um, uh, stalls and kind of uh, puts back the release schedule for it, um, for that. So I, I don't know, like it's, because it's like a lot of a lot of effort goes into those videos and they're, they're edited they take days in some cases like a week to to create fully create uh so anything can happen right yeah oh i guess we've got to talk about money dan and kabam's money making and net marble's yeah. money making yeah they had they had a a good quarter so uh q3 so that's uh july uh august september the highest revenue numbers in the history of the game yeah you wouldn't think there was a global pandemic on and people weren't spending well apparently they were uh i think a lot of the fan base can work from home uh, so they they were not as impacted um and the other thing is uh if your other sources of entertainment are shut down, maybe you don't feel as bad about spending on a mobile game. <laughs> yeah. Because, because you know, you're not going to the beach, you're not going to amusement parks, you're not going to the movies. So maybe you feel like you've got a few extra entertainment dollars. Uh, the other things, of course, when you look at that timeline for the game, that's the roadmaps had come out. And mm. then, of course, September, Apocalypse and Professor X. Yeah. Um, those are two pretty sweet champions to end the quarter with uh because people went absolutely insane for uh apocalypse crystals mm. so know. but you know overall it's just it's just great to see that the game is st still on really strong financial footing yeah. almost six years in like that is not normal for a mobile game um, exactly. and a, a lot of people have been sort of wondering about how this fits in with realm and if Kabam was was backing off on MCOC because of Realm, it's like, well, I don't think you've got to worry about that because you don't close mm. a game down that has just posted its highest revenue numbers ever. Exactly. <laughs> like it's... that's that's not how businesses work. Mm. And it's good for like, like longevity as well, like because I know yeah. a lot of people do get they do get kind of incensed is the word about the extent of money that. Uh, Kabam is making well. It's not thing is. I, I don't think they could say like, "Oh, Kabam are making the money." It's not really Kabam making the money. It's it's Net Marble making the money. Uh, Marvel and and I'm sure Marvel gets a a good chunk of that. Yeah, it's like yeah, everyone get everyone gets everyone gets the, the the chunk. Shareholders as well. I don't know if Kabam are shareholders. I would want to assume that it would go back is go goes back to Net Marble as um having a 
uh, stock or, or share system associated with their financials. And that's the thing, like a lot of the times, like, you know, it's with, with um, like, oh, you know, Google earns a lot of money. YouTube earns a lot of money. Actually, YouTube, uh, from what I gather, YouTube always runs at a loss. It's a sinkhole for, for money. Some companies are run as a... Um, as like loss leaders, so to speak, even though advertisements, you pay advertisements to, to, to YouTube and, or, or kind mm-hmm. of Google. Um, it all goes, I think it goes like something like it goes YouTube at the right, at the very bottom. Then it goes Google. And then I think there's something that works out with Google AdSense and then above that is alphabet. And it's like, it's so weird. Cause then all the shares are like with alphabet and they're not with like goo. I think it's not with Google. I think it's all, all with alphabet. So it's, it's mad, isn't it? The way that financial structure is done. But, I've, died, I've kind of like, I've, I've done that thing, down what I've just kind of gone on a tangent. Um, <laughs> Rich tangents on a Friday night. Yeah, I, I blame the wine. But, you know, the, the good news is, you know, the bottom line is, is uh, M2C is really healthy. Mm. And uh, you know, the roadmaps have put the game in a better place. Uh, it appears that the players have rewarded uh, Kabam for the roadmaps and the improvements to the game. And... We'll just have to watch Q4 because Q4 is traditionally the biggest revenue month. Uh, re- sorry, the revenue quarter yeah. of the of the year, right? Yeah. So if they had a record Q3, they would then need to have a record Q4 to uh, to continue that that trend. And that's the thing, isn't it? I guess that will be a big problem for Marvel Realm is they come out with with that game on the 16th of December. Uh, we will talk a bit, a little bit about Realm. I haven't really kind of we, we haven't really scheduled much time to talk about it. I, I mean, I could have, I'll have um, my my say on it in a, in a minute. Um, but this is one of these things about like sandwiching a new game into this. Like, what is it going to do? I don't think putting something into the final part of Q4. Um, I don't think you're going to see crazy numbers from Marvel Realm right off the the bat because everyone may be spent out with MCOC. If you are an MCOC and uh, an an MROC fan. To be honest, um, personally, I will inject money in. I've got sponsorship for Cyber Weekend, which I'm going to do. I'm going to inject a bit of uh, money into the game. It won't be crazy amounts, not like a, a lot of the others, um, but it will be as much as I feel that it's pos- I can do. And then um, on Christmas Day with the Christmas Day deals, those are the two times I, I'll spend. That I like. I like spending because you get something more than the normal amount that you spend and the same thing with free to play you get the best option of the year to to right. kind of spend your free units that you've cultivated over the space of between july 4th and and now yeah absolutely so mm. with realm it's uh like you said like the mcoc players may have just spent themselves out or or maybe also holding on if there's uh gifting going on that would overlap likely gifting. with the release of uh rich is like oh not gifting well funny um, you should say that i'm actually going to be um if anybody is is interested i'm going to be doing a special mcoc news reports type video uh which will i actually need to speak to you dan funnily enough about about that because i need i need i would i do need you i would like i would like you to be um associated with it because i want to do this kind of like happy to be associated good so um (laughs) i've spoken to maladar today because the the way that say asgard um were frustrated about the fairness of the of the gifting event last year we've talked earlier about having a a a type of interview thing which would just be like it's gonna i want to do this like this documentary type thing it might be out by the end of the month where it's like um uh, you know, done as a, like the gifting event is a is a staple event joined by many players. But over the last couple of year, over the last year, it's been a case that this has been unsettled in nature. We don't know if this is ever going to be a thing. And then just like cut it like it's like a documentary. Do all this kind of like big build up, and then do like little segments of what Kabam have done to prevent stuff, and will this safeguard players? And then kind of go to cut to different people based on their previous experience, how they feel Kabam have handled it. Do they think that it would be good? And I'm really excited for stuff like that. And sorry I interrupted you, Dan. No, no, Rich. <laughs> I, I think now. Do you think uh, now? Do you think you can get a unit loader for this documentary? But you can do it so that they're like in in like the shadows and you can't see their face and they're changing their voice. D- yes, I'd love to do that. <laughs> well, we do it as and we try to do it like this. But really, we said the Kabam are unfair organization. Um, yeah, just exactly that. That would be such a good idea. 
if I there had the, we go. If I had the time there. to do it, um, and I like. No, I know that's the thing. If you have the time, but it's, I, I, then you know, like I can bottom. I can just see this thing getting getting put together. <laughs> it's it's a it's a good idea for sure. Yeah, uh, but I was uh, d- d- before we were talking about that. I was just thinking about Realm. Is hmm. uh, I wonder, I, I wonder how much of the MCOC fan base is actually their audience because it, it it's such a different game. I wonder if they're more going to go after Future Fight players because Future yeah. Fight Fight seems like it's on the ropes, both in terms oh, yeah. of money and the conversation around the game. There's there's boycotts. It seems like you know they're. Uh, the their biggest uh youtuber what's it what's his name the the seton of uh, future Sin- fight sinus Senex or something like that yeah yeah him yeah yeah like, I, he I, seems I really that. unhappy with the game um so and and i know that their numbers uh are are going the wrong way uh yeah, and, was... and future fight and realm seem like more similar games in terms of the fight mechanics where it seems to be real time I personally feel that the um, what are they what are they called what, what are they called it's, I can't remember what the developers called I don't know if that's a proper net marble type thing. Is it NetEase? Is the is... Uh, I think NetEase is the competitor to um, uh, what is it called? I'm just going to put it in our Marvel Future Fight. I th- the, the okay, it, but it is. I mean, it is a net marble game. So yeah, it's net like... marble. Uh, net marble Monster Inc. Um, oh, mon- yeah. I all right. but personally feel they've given up, and the reason I feel they've given up is they are going to refocus. And whether or not this is proper refocus, it's like if it is Net Marble Monster, the last thing that they came out with, or the most recent thing, was Star Wars Force Arena. Now I played that, and that's another kind of like horrible cash dra- cash grab. So I think they might have given up on maybe that studio and what they're doing with it. As Net Marble seem to be a little bit more focused on the effort of uh, Marvel Future Revolution, and I, I think that is incredibly tipped to be better than, uh, well, not better. No, I'm not going to say well better than Marvel Future Re- F- Future Fight, but also tipped to be one of the best games, mobile games, to come out that's Mar- uh, Marvel related, certainly in a composition standpoint. Because of how they're kind of advertising it. And I could be wrong because the thing is I was wrong about what I thought Marvel Realm was going to be. I thought it would have more of a um, story mode that had an, or have a story element to it. You could um, open explore. But um, no, not at all. Yeah, I mean, that that seems Future Revolution seems to be that open world game. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see how all these games end up coexisting together because it doesn't feel like they can all make it like that's just a lot of marvel (laughs) out there and i do like mcoc's chances because mcoc as far as its core fight mechanics seems the most different than all uh, than all of those others yeah because it's like um it's like virtual like virtual fighter or kind of um um, it's like a mobile it's not mobile mortal combat because there is a mobile mortal combat but it's like it's it's like Capcom. It's it's like all the yeah. stuff that I think a lot of a lot of people like. I think it's um, it's definitely better if you look at like injustice and things. It's it's got like a smoothness to it in some areas. The the biggest problem with having the game as it is that when you have things like dropped inputs and and the connection and the, the stability, the optimization. I think that's the only kind of levels of criticisms you can throw at the game. But apart from that, if Kabam ever got over that, and again, from Kabam's standpoint, they'll look at this and go, hey, you know, we cannot optimize a game for every single Android device the same way that we can't optimize it for every single iPhone or Apple device. You know, it, it's a tough one, isn't it? You'd love everyone to be able to play it smoothly. But it's just not going to be the case. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Um, certainly, you know, I I'm always thankful when I, uh, you know, as an iPhone player, just you hear some of those horror stories. But I have certainly had to deal with more force closing of the the app it just uh, in the past week or so than I've ever seen. Mm, uh, yeah. Like I, it's always been very stable for me, but um, it hasn't happened during war yet for me it did happen once in alliance quest mm. um thankfully i didn't lose my health mm. um because it would it you know that that would have been crappy uh, 
but yeah, definitely an arena. I have, I have been pretty plagued by the uh, app just closing on me in arena the last week or so. Oh, that's not good. But I mean, they they know about that. They they don't want that either. They're working on it, but I uh, feel like if they could just snap their fingers and fix it, it would have already been fixed. Yeah, yeah, true. Because yeah. uh, uh, speaking of games, I mean, like you know, I think I think we've covered a good chunk of MCOC stuff. Uh, I Marvel Realms is a bit of a difficult one for me at the moment. I cannot get games. Really, it's it's that bad. It, it's that it's that bad, and I don't know if it's like we uh, we have kind of like talked about this idea of uh, geographical matchmaking. Yeah. Uh, I changed my not my my usual schedule for playing was I'd always play about midday UK time, and then I decided to change that to kind of about uh, four PM UK time. I then changed it again to about eight PM UK time, and every time I've changed it, when I kind of like look to kind of like do some gaming and, and stuff. For, and I do like a test for an hour each of those times. I'm just not able to grab a game. So I was like, I took a two. Then I took a two week break. I got a little bit kind of um, frustrated, and I took a break. I just went fine. Look, do you know what? I'll give it two weeks off, and I'll come back. Right. I even kind of skipped off the onslaught thing as soon as they did the death match. It brought players interested. They came back. They played it. I then th- I then thought, okay, well it's time to go back and see what's see what's the crack. And I just can't get games. And if I'm getting games, same problem, where before I was grabbing, I was grabbing like just the, the people with the best gear, like clearly rank three champions, and rare yeah rank three champions rare gear. Even when I've got like two players and one bot versus me and two bots, my bots yeah. were idiot bots, and the bots are the bot on the other team was actually playing well. Isn't isn't that always how it is? Yeah, like your your bots just run in and get slaughtered. <laughs> I think it was like percentages, like it was just like stupid percentages. If I've got it, mm. um, I'm gonna see if I kind of I can get it on on screen for those watching on, um, on YouTube. Yeah, because I I haven't played for a couple weeks. I I haven't had time to download, uh, go you know go through the the hoops to download the game again. But I I think I'll probably download it one more time before the global launch because i did want to try this new game mode yeah i mean that's the thing i wanted to try it as well i'm just trying to see if i can fi- i can't i can't find the image unfortunately just going to read out what the stats were but it was something stupid like i was the only person on my on my team with a bunch of bots to actually represent i think it was a case like the, the even the enemy bots were playing better than than my bots and I, I was thinking like oh man come on this is just getting stupid now even like trying to find a t- like, I ended up just like supporting. I think it was just like a random person and their team, because I was like, yep. I'll, I'll, and I like I'll face up against the stupid summoner bots that begin the game. You begin the game fighting off against in the first, I don't know, few times that you do arena, um, arena conquest. And I'm like, I'll just do that. And then it was like, oh, for God's sake. So it does need global release. It was it's delayed. On Marvel Minute, they said it was going to be. The 16th of November, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we know it's the, um, it's it's now going to be the 16th of December. Yeah. So uh, my sources say that Marvel Minute was just incorrect. Ah. That it was it was not a delay. They were just, uh, it was fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the it's like the wrong people to get it right. No, the wrong. The, it's the right people to get it wrong. Or the wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's the right. It's worse as well because it's like I bet like people are like oh no we're not ready why did they do that? Great. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it and honestly like it wouldn't make sense mm. for it to come out this month because I really think they want to do a tie-in with something in MCOC that leads people over to Realm. Yeah, that's... so it makes a lot more yeah. sense. Um, if the EQ in in MCOC at all relates to Realm, yeah, which I expect it will next month. Like once once they started talking about Immortal Hulk, I was like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, like maybe it's a soft release and then they'll get to it in December. But now that I now that I see uh, what they're doing, um, yeah, I would. I'm excited for December. I think a lot of people are. We've got book, you know, book two. Uh, you've got the Daredevil buff. You've got the Realm Realm coming out. Like it. It kind of is all coming together for a big sixth anniversary, which is very cool. Yeah, I really want a hundred percent. I said to myself, "Oh, I want a hundred percent at six by um, by 
the end of the year. To be honest, I think I will plan, I think my plan is to 100%, 6.2, 6.3, and do an initial completion of um, uh, at uh, book two, act one, and triad, and this is further ambitious to 100% Abyss of Legends, which I don't know if I can 100% all that stuff by the end of the year. We'll have to see, but I'd love to think that, that that's what I could achieve. Oh, by the way, whilst we've been recording, um, I've just hit 50,000 subscribers, so that's something. That's a good early birthday present for you, Rich. That's a good early birthday present, yeah, so um, I'm... I'm happy about that. Thank you, everybody, for, for, for helping out. It's a bit of a weird... I, just bit, I, I would say it's very bittersweet with the stuff that's going on, but I'll try and take the um, uh, the positives where, where I can and and stuff and um, and push through toward my, towards my birthday and do some streaming. So thanks, everybody, and, and, and whatnot. But, yeah, um, I am still positive for the end of the year and what I want to achieve. Is there anything you want to achieve by the end of the year, Dan? I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of with you there, Rich. Like I, I'd love to 100% act six by the end of the year. I don't I don't think it's going to happen. So I'm just you know 2020 has been such a crazy year. I mm. I don't know. I'm just going to see what comes at us in terms of uh, book two and maybe variant six. Uh, so def definitely just going to try to enjoy the game, have fun. <sighs> uh pull a six star apocalypse in december yeah i'm with you there <laughs> that's that's what I, you know that's what i really want to do out of all yeah. things i'd like to get throne breaker by the end of the year and i would like to pull a six star apocalypse on december 15th uh that would bring me joy mm. um yeah other than that just you know just want to keep having fun uh get some good content uh done and and out for the people and uh you know just just try to uh not get as stressed out by things enjoy life a little bit more it's been it's been tough yeah. this year to do that so um you know that's just trying to get in a good headspace and just just be understanding when things don't happen as quickly as i would like yes i think i'm in the same boat as well uh there's definitely stuff that i would have liked to achieve quicker than i have uh but again it's like it's just it's just trying to find a balance for everything like, but I just enjoy, just trying to enjoy, yep. enjoy stuff. Like, I, I remember, like, one thing I did say to myself at the start of the year um, with with doing YouTube and kind of as much like when I was doing content. Essentially, it's like, it's, it's working. It's just try and say yes a bit more to, like, stuff that if M says, like, oh, could, could we do this or should we should we do this? And I'm like, I, now it's just a case of going, yes, let's let's do that. Let's, let's go out for the day here let's go and do that there let's go and meet up with those people uh you know covid depend it's just it's just kids go like oh right. i'd like to do this it's just say yes to stuff because otherwise i'm just going to spend a, a life um, you know look back on my life and go what was i doing i was spending like an entire day uh live streaming an arena grind live streaming a um a completion of something and i'm just like oh did i really and i can't say would i really did i really enjoy that like whilst i was doing the Ab abyss of legends run um like i said oh we should go out, we go out for lunch whilst we've got got a, got a chance before everything goes into lockdown and i was like i'm um, i thought to myself i'm partway through an abyss run i'm like i would i could i could i could live stream from the start of the day to the end of the day and i just went no let's just go out let's let's go out let's 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 spend yep. some time um, yeah i hear i hear you man just you gotta uh, you gotta call timeouts <laughs> yeah on stuff these days like you you really really do get outside and you know find some family time and, and not feel like you're working uh 24 7 just to just to keep going yeah yeah and of course you know you got the uh my birthday's monday i think yours is friday what the end of next week yeah next next friday so we'll we'll uh be recording the birthday podcast next week it's the birthday boys Ooh. yeah I'll be, oh. I think I'll be, I think we'll be drinking again um, next next Friday. Mm, um, there we go. Early, <laughs> bit too early for you to drink, and especially because you don't, you know, after you know, you don't want to be kind of like after the podcast, like stumbling upstairs. But like, it's time for dinner. I don't <laughs> care what power attack I use with that Pikachu. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Dan, what are you up to next week? Um, I am doing a um account update. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's my big one. Doing a count update. Uh, gonna I've got a crystal opening. 
coming out later and uh hopefully my guide for 6.2.2 which um i have a draft of but it's like nine pages long because there's so many nodes (laughs) and fights that need to be explained like the proofreading of some of these act six guides uh it hurts my soul (laughs) <laughs> that does sound nasty but, it'd be well but worth i will it. get there i will get there I and everyone make sure you bookmark frontlinemcc.home.blog you get all your key information there um as well uh for me i don't know what i'm really going to be doing because i was going to do a lot of marvel realm stuff i'm going to like put on a back burner i think i'm going to do a lot of like newsy type stuff and posts i'm actually thinking i might live stream a good chunk of next week as well um on on youtube i think i'm like one day i'll do act 6.3 the next day i'll do an entire arena grind the next day something different but also slotting like news um especially as i make a lot of these kind of big kind of uh newsy report videos i want to revisit an old rare uh, i want to do a video on a load of rare champions from a video that was kind of like back in the day uh rare champions and forgotten champions um and uh, another video on this the, the gifting event thing all of which i think it will take a bit of time and then i'll upload that next not next week the week after the final week of november and then just build up towards the big december push and lots of guides i'm redoing every single guide I'm, i've put out and do some new ones like abyss labyrinth for legends and so many others so yeah busy stuff um very cool very yeah. cool dan have a lovely weekend you too, my friend. Yep. And uh, thanks, everybody, for, for listening in and watching over on YouTube. And we'll see you all next week for episode 42. Bye-bye, folks.